Hello, this is a short video about our cannon. It aims to provide you with a brief history about where they came from, when they were used and how they are used now. A collection of cannon of this age and this provenance and with the history of them haven't really moved from the place that they were commissioned for in 400 years. They're the largest collection of cast iron cannon with known history. If you look at the guns on the walls, they on one hand are very ugly in that they are designed to kill and to destroy, but on the other hand they're beautiful examples of the metal finder's art and each of them, as you see, if you look at them, is different. Each of these guns is a unique record. They are, if you like, documents uh, that tell us about the history of the defence of London Derry, Derry. They tell us a lot about the technology of how people handled metals in the 17th century. They're, the, they're not just decoration on the walls. They are an integral part of the design of the walls. The walls were designed to accommodate the the cannon and therefore we have a, a record of everything about the cannons you know who made them who made the carriages who engraved them who transported them as well as how they were used during various conflicts that the, war, the walls were involved in they were perfectly adequate for defending the city walls but they have been more or less useless for attacking the defense of the city was a pretty epic affair Part of the reason of the success for the defenders was the fact that the attackers lacked the kind of siege gun that was used to knock down walls. So the, the, the dairy walls would essentially be a curtain wall that went all the way around. What makes them different and quite special is that they, in the early 17th century they were the latest uh, style of modern fortifications. So you've got these straight bits, you have the four main gateways uh, and there's four straight, uh, streets meeting in a diamond and the purpose of that was to get cannon from one end to the other as quickly as possible. The smallest guns that would have been on the wall were, were anti-personnel weapons. They, fired, they were firing a ball maybe of two pounds, one and a half to two pounds. So if you fired them at a, at a file of troops they could maybe knock out four or five, six men. The sakers on the walls, which are the ones which have uh, a slightly larger calibre, they would have been good for knocking over the opposing side's guns. All, all the cannons are 17th century, either sent over in 1622 or uh, sent over in 1642. The cannon here are probably the most important assemblage of guns, uh, in, certainly in the British Isles and in a lot of Europe. Guns that were brought over here by Sir Henry Dockra, a batch of guns that were brought over in 1619 under the warning from James I, a group of guns that were brought over in 1642, sent over by the City of London for the defence of Derry against the, uh, the insurgents uh, of the, the Great Rebellion. They survived on the walls and were used during the, the siege of 1689. There's an opportunity to, to use the resource to understand early 17th century transportation, gun finding, firing of cannon, maintenance of cannon. So it's, we, you can understand the other trades through the cannon. What I'm looking for are signs of outbreaks of corrosion that have happened since the guns were conserved. So it's estimated how much damage that has done, what will be necessary to, to repair it. Um, similarly with the carriages. Generally what we're looking for is any rot that's occurred on them because they've been in a static position, they haven't been moving and they can settle quite a lot which is all the weight of the gun with the wheels not moving is all in one place so joints and things can open up. So when I'm inspecting the wheels I'm looking for anywhere where the water can lie to form some rot and once I've looked at those I'm looking to see if any gaps or splits have opened up which could affect the wheel. Cannon wheels, in their essence, are very big and heavy to make, um, and we need to make sure that the water is not getting into them. It's a, it's a real privilege uh, for people, local and visitors, to be able to see these cannon on the walls that they were commissioned for, rather than just in a museum. And, th and that's why it's important that we research how best to conserve them. 
keeping them outside but making sure that uh, they're as cared for as if they were in a roofed museum. Council recognises the historic significance of these artefacts. We are committed to the conservation and preservation so the future generations can enjoy them. We encourage you to come and take a look.